Hello, my posse. Hi, all my new subscribers. Thank you so much for coming into my living room today and uh, having a little chit chat. Today is a chit chat about um, an update for you on our coronavirus that hit me and my husband, um, which is why you haven't seen us. So I hope you stay tuned, grab yourself a cup of coffee. I'm gonna try to not make this too long um, because today is our 46th anniversary and uh, we're actually getting dinner delivered from my daughter. So stay tuned for a minute, I'll be right back. Yes, this has been like a whirlwind of um, of a horrendous virus that actually uh, hit me and my husband. Um, for all of you who have been on here and have done videos asking for um, prayers for my husband, especially, um, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I I don't want to ever leave anybody out, but. Uh, my sister Dolores, the baking diva uh, from New Jersey, who is my sister from other parents, but she belongs to me. I know she was very concerned. She did a beautiful <clears throat> uh, video at requesting prayers. Bella, um, over there in England, Beauty on a Budget, also did a great video asking for prayers. There are many of you who mentioned my husband and I during this month crisis that we've been going through, I, I couldn't thank you enough for thinking enough about us. <clears throat> I'm gonna try to get through this. Um, and requesting prayers. We felt the prayers from all around the United States, <clears throat> from everywhere that you are, we felt the, the prayers. Uh, I, some of you had times that, that you were praying and I, we felt them and um, as all I can say is that I don't think that my husband particularly <clears throat> would have made it through this uh, horrible, horrible uh, virus without the power of prayer. It's just so many of you. Wendy, my sweet, my life Wendy, I love you. All the text messages, all the messages that I've received. Some of you have I've answered, some of you. I was so sick here myself being alone, I, it was very hard for me to answer everybody, but I did get your emails, I did get your text messages, I got your messages on Facebook, and I just can't thank you enough. Um, like I say, this this has been just a horrendous thing to go through, and um, you know, they all <clears throat> talk about the coronavirus, and uh, um, excuse me, and you just don't ever think it would happen. And my husband and I were very, very cautious. We were wear wearing gloves out at the store before it became kind of mandatory to wear gloves and um, masks. And the last time that we were out in a public store was March 20th. And uh, we were always together. My husband and I are always together. And the crazy thing about it is, is that I was really sick. If you remember some of my videos, I was complaining in December about headaches. And my doctor and I were trying to figure out, you know, whether it was migraines, whether it was sinus headaches. And I was under doctor's care then. My blood pressure was up and down, up and down. It was just crazy, but there was no coronavirus you know, tests or anything about coronavirus back in December. So we just fluffed it off as migraines and let it go at that. And my symptoms were like getting relatively, just kind of, uh, I was dizzy. I kept telling my doctor, I'm off my game, man. I'm off my game, something's wrong, I'm off my game. And he was like, yeah, I don't know. We thought it was my blood pressure. My blood pressure is always low. It was elevated. It's never elevated. We thought, okay, well, this is it. It's blood pressure. I'm having blood pressure issues. And I think I discussed that in one of my videos with you. Um, anyway, could have been. Nobody knows now. So 
But we were, my husband developed a cold and he's got COPD, as some of you know, and he's got atrial fib. And so he gets bronchitis a lot, he gets coughs a lot. So he started to develop this cough around March 23rd or something. So I was on it, I was an advocate for him, for his wellness. I called my doctor, he said, oh yeah, we better, we better. Now the COVID tests were becoming available then, um, not as fast as you would like, but he did get, managed to get him a test and he said, I'd like you both tested. I said, well, I don't have any symptoms, so to speak, but I do have this nauseousness and these headaches. He said, well, let's get you both tested. So March 26, we go down to the clinic and uh, he was tested. The doctor would not test me because I was didn't have shortness of breath. I didn't have your atypical cough like uh, that is part of the symptoms of uh, COVID. So they didn't test me and I didn't put my foot down and advocate for myself and say, listen, my doctor says, test me, test me. Anyway, that was March 26. Um, he, can, he was on medication for his cough. Uh, doctor put him on right away because we know what to do, how to nip, nip his cough and his bronchitis when he gets it. So we put him on the medication and everything and um, he just, just wasn't responding well. And I was not getting better as far as my nauseous, vomiting and headache were going. I was not getting any better. Anyway, like, you know, he had mustered through like he always does and it was like March 31st and he started to cough about nine o'clock at night and he says, oh, this darn cough is just gets so worse at night. And I'm like, yeah. And um, he was hungry and I was so nauseous. I couldn't even make him dinner and he made himself a can of pea soup. He'll never eat pea soup again, I swear. And uh, he made himself a can of pea soup and I'm like, pea soup, you know. Anyway, he took his, all his medication, he took his cough medicine, he took everything and he went to bed. And so um, I went to bed probably about midnight and I looked at him and he was sleeping, he was okay. Well then about 12.20, um, he woke up, he could not breathe. I mean, he could not breathe. And he was shaking so bad, freezing cold. I said, you want me to call 911? And he couldn't even answer me, so I did. I called 911 and they came and it's like, they're very hesitant to come in your house and they're very hesitant, well, how long has he had these symptoms? And I said, well, we've been doctoring. He had a COVID test, but the results are not back yet. Now this is like, he had him on the 26th, the COVID test. This is the 31st, well, actually April 1st, and the tests were not back yet. So finally the, um, the EMTs took his temperature and it was 105. And they said, yeah, he's going with us. So they took him. And I think the worst part of this for me was that I couldn't go. I asked them, I said, can I go? And they said, no, you can't, you can't go, sorry. And knowing that, you know, your husband may have COVID and that you, you can't even go with him. You can't even be by his side. And if anything should happen, you can't be there. I mean, it's, it's a very scary, it's a very scary, scary thing. And uh, they took him. And my daughter works for the hospital, so she was able to get to the nurse who was in charge of him. They gave him oxygen, actually, in the um, emergency vehicle here, and he they stabilized him a little bit. So when he got to the hospital, he asked the nurse if he could call me, and he called me, and he said, "Oh boy, if I wouldn't have got that oxygen, he says I would have never made it at home. I couldn't, I couldn't breathe." So from there, they took him up to ICU so they could just monitor his oxygen level. And while he was up there, he crashed and um, couldn't breathe. And they, um, they put him on a ventilator right away. They didn't even have time to call me or my daughter or anybody. They just put him on a ventilator. And uh, it just did not look good. You know, he has underlying conditions. He has COPD. He has, like I say, AFib adding the, to this COVID. And he had just said to me a few days before, you know, if I get this, I'm never gonna make it because I have all these underlying conditions. So it was like, it was hysterical, hysterical for, for all of us. My grandkids were all upset. My grandson at, at two o'clock in the morning was, um, uh, sorry, that was my doctor. 
my grandson at two o'clock in the morning was on Snapchat saying, I know this is April Fool's. This isn't an April Fool's joke. My, my papa went in the hospital. He's got that virus. And all of his friends, uh, he's going to be 13, all of his friends started to message him at home and comfort him at three o'clock in the morning. I, I mean, what great friends, what great kids that we have out there. It was just amazing. And he had comfort. He talked to his buddy on the phone till like four o'clock in the morning. I mean, it was just the grandkids, you know, their papas were both everything to them. And so the next day came, he was still on the ventilator. I at home here was by myself. I couldn't see my grandkids because we had been quarantined like two weeks before this all transpired. Him and I were already quarantined. We weren't seeing our grandkids. When he had the COVID test, we said, no, we're done until these tests comes back. So anyway, they did the COVID test when he was uh, in ICU and it came back like right away positive before the first one even came back. The first one came back 13 days later that it was positive. Uh, our county finally got in touch with me, but by that time he was already um, on a ventilator. And so me at home here, I, I guess I didn't have the classic symptoms. Me and my daughter were both sick. I mean, when I say sick, it was nauseous, vomiting, headache, like we felt like we were gonna have an aneurysm. The, our head was so bad. And she was home throwing up. I was here throwing up. I was trying to talk to my doctor via telemedicine. I'm worried to death about Denny. I'm so sick I couldn't even function. I mean, I couldn't even get out of bed. So I stayed here for two and a half weeks, dehydrated, not eating, not drinking. Gina was on the phone with me, her being sick, calling me all the time, friends calling me all the time, messages coming in. I was like a vegetable. It's like my skin hurt. My, my symptoms were, like I say, nauseous, vomiting, um, headache, and itchiness. I had like the itchiest nose. I wanted to just pull my nose off and eat it, but I would have probably thrown it up. Uh, but I, with the palms of my hands, my tips of my fingers, underneath my toes, were like so itchy. I, I couldn't even, I couldn't stand it. It was like poison ivy five times over. Couldn't get out of bed. Uh, they kept prescribing me, what was that one medication, Zarkon or so something? I don't know. Um, I probably won't put it in here because I'm not going to really edit this. Uh, for nauseous and vomiting, it, it made me worse. Nothing, nothing helped me. So I was home here thinking, I'm gonna die. I, this is like the worst thing I've ever had. My husband's in the hospital. I don't know if he's gonna make it. Uh, it. It was just, it was a nightmare. And you know, all my friends, of course, and my family were calling me and I so appreciate it, but it was like, I don't call me. I don't wanna talk to anybody. I was like, I couldn't even talk on the phone. I was I was that sick and then worried to death about him. And so I'm telling you this this virus attacks you in ways that uh, you just don't even think possible. And and the classic symptoms aren't always the classic symptoms. I mean, I had no shortness of breath. I I had a little <coughs> cough like that, but I didn't have your classic cough like my husband had and he also had you know double pneumonia with this which was another bad thing so it's been really a rough rough ride guys and um you know i i'm so thankful that you kept with me i know you've been watching my videos you've been emailing me um keeping up with me and i so appreciate it i i will get back to business um, and fun business, uh, I'm sure soon. I, Denny was on the um, ventilator for nine days, um, and then they took him off of it, and he was doing well, and he was bound and determined that he was gonna make it home April 20th, which is today, for our 46th wedding anniversary. And uh, I brought him home on uh, Friday. And so he, he kept his promise, and he kept telling the nurses even when he was off the ventilator, even when he was on the ventilator, he was writing notes like, I'm going home for my anniversary. <laughs> he was bound and determined that was his goal. But he said when he was laying there, he just felt, he felt like this power coming over him, like 
like he was scared he because he was afraid of course that he was not going to see his family again you can imagine what goes through the tra the traumatizing of these patients that are on a ventilate ventilator he wasn't really in a self, I, uh, they didn't put him in a self-induced coma, to my knowledge. So he was aware of his surroundings, and uh, which made it hard. The one good thing about it is uh, a couple of, well, the next day after he was in there, they now have at our hospital uh, FaceTime, and I was able to um, FaceTime him, and he was able to see me, and I was able to see him, and of course, you know, he cried and. I was trying to hold back the tears because I didn't want him to get more emotional. And, you know, I didn't want to let on like I was so sick. So, like, here I am trying to primp up because I knew this FaceTime call was coming and I'm trying to do the skin and the hair and, like, hi. And I was like, whoa, on myself. But I don't want to show. He, he just now, since he's been home, realized how sick I was. But he, you know, he had no idea. He had no idea that. <clears throat> me or my daughter were this sick um so it's a it's i'd like to say that we're on the road to recovery i'm pretty sure i am um i lost um 12 pounds trust me uh, we always talk about you know i wrote the book finding the right diet for you and how to lose weight um and i'll tell you i uh this is not the way that i wanted to lose you know 12 pounds and i I mean, I had nothing in me for like three weeks and my daughter kept bringing over Gatorade. Gatorade was like my miracle water because if it wasn't for that, I, don't, I probably would have had nothing in my system. And so, you know, I was laying here myself thinking like, oh my gosh, you know, this is terrible to say, but I was like, oh my gosh, what if I don't make it? What if, what if like, I was unlocking doors so, you know, like emergency crews could come in. That's how sick I was. Um, but you know, um, the silver lining to it all is he is home. Uh, he did lose 25 pounds in, uh, 19 days. Uh, but I'm, you know, I'm good at fattening him up and we've already started our three meals a day and his insure. And so, you know, I'll get him back to where he's, uh, you know, he builds up his stamina. He's very weak. Um, I mean, he would come and say hello to you, but you know, he's, very conscious about the weight that he lost. And he goes, I need some of your cream. I, can you got any of that cream you can rub on me? Look at the skin. And I was like, and I was telling him, I go, I got my Ella Frida vitamin. I have it out here because I put some on him. I said, if it wasn't for my Ella Frida vitamin C serum, I think I would be, be like a prune. I was so dehydrated. My skin was so dry. And as sick as I was, here I am washing my face, putting on my vitamin C. That's pretty sad. It's really pretty sad when you've got the virus and you're worried about your you're worried about your skin drying up. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> anyway, but you know, I uh, I'm okay. I I I'm I'm glad I lost a couple of pounds. 12 pounds is a little much for me. Um but you know, he's very very frail and uh I just I don't know what I would have done without all of you. Uh, without all of your prayers, without all of your beautiful, beautiful emails, uh, um, your passages, uh, you know, from the Bible, your, 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 just your, your wonderful words that really one night I was so badly sick and, um, oh, Kathy on here and little, I mean, I can't even mention names cause I'll leave somebody out, but they were sending me, you know, um, quotes from the Bible and things and I would be laying there at night just reading them and crying and grateful uh, very grateful and uh, if some of you I didn't answer I certainly apologize I just I couldn't keep up uh, with between worrying about him and being sick myself but I want you to know that everything you said everything you did for us the prayers that you kept coming there has to be power in prayers because the hospital told him my husband's 74 years old with underlying condition that he's one in 20% who made it out uh, because they didn't have really much hope for him when he went in. But by the grace of God, by all of you, 
by the great staff at this hospital who put their lives in jeopardy every day who have family at home, who work those front lines, keeping my husband alive, uh, jeopardizing their own health uh, to save patients. They are so underpaid and so they need to be acknowledged every solitary single day. And the ones that they lose, they're as heartbroken as um, the families are themselves because they work so hard. The staff there was what I would call, were like immediately on that phone and giving me happy updates, you know, like, hey, oh yeah, he's doing really good today. He's feisty today. And yeah, his alarm went off in his bed because he, he tried to get up and I told him, no, 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 that's a no, no, you can't do that. And you know, they're just really upbeat. I mean, they weren't like, yeah, well, He's really bad today and he's giving his heart. No, they were just so upbeat. And that's the thing about being positive and staying positive and keeping upbeat and and trying not to think of anything negative that's uh, gonna happen because we don't know. That's, that's in the hands of Almighty God uh, when our time is up and his time wasn't up, my time wasn't up. And um, must have been all of you just praying for us, I'm sure. So that is my update. That is where I've been uh, missing in action, so to speak, for this month. Uh, I'll be back soon. Uh, thank you for loving me. Thank you for caring about me. Thank you for asking other creators how I am, if anybody's heard anything from me. I so appreciate you. I so appreciate you. And um, when things get back to normal, we're gonna have that super giveaway, I promise. Uh, that I said I was gonna have, and I never never backed out on my word. So me and my skinny little neck <laughs> are gonna go and have our anniversary dinner sent over by my daughter and her kids. And I thank you all again from the bottom of my heart. I wish I could just come and give you a hug. I'm gonna give you all a virtual hug and hope you can feel it because you are what saved my husband and you are what saved me. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I love you. I will see you real soon. Um, and um, I'll update you soon. Thank you. I love you guys. Take care of yourself. Stay home. Stay safe. And I got to just say for all the, and I, I may edit this out, but, you know, they're protesting here in my state about going back to work and, and you know, the government's making you stay home. But you know what? Until you're hit with this virus, you have no idea what it's like. Yeah, it's tough being quarantined. Yeah, it's tough staying home. Yeah, it's, you know, you've got your kids around, you've got homeschooling. But you know what? And you're complaining about six feet distancing and, you know, their rights are taken away. But you know what? Somebody took away our rights. Uh, sometime in March, we were out. Somebody somebody something tested positive out there for coronavirus and we caught it from somebody because we were out with the general public you know the beginning of march all the way through march 20th we were out and so we contacted this from somebody who was not careful of course you know things were new then but you know they took away our rights they've taken away rights of people that who have not made it as far as we have by being out there because they don't want to be told to stay home. But trust me, this is the only way we're going to curb this thing is to stay home, stay safe, stay quarantined, watch movies, uh, find a passion maybe that, that you want to do that you haven't done. Start to write a book. Uh, life experiences that's what i told my daughter she's so brilliant do do something you know to uh to get your juices flowing take this time to uh, to reinvent yourself this quarantine time is a time to reinvent yourself look at yourself look at the things that bothered you before you know this is the first time i think in my 77 years on earth um, we are all equal there is no such thing as you're better than me, you're richer than me, I have more possessions than you. It doesn't matter. All of this stuff, all of your worldly possessions, all of your money, all of your wealth does not help during this kind of crisis. We are all equal. We are all susceptible to getting this virus and making us 
sick or killing us. So we're all in the same boat. Let's all pull together. Let's all stay home. I mean, six feet distancing, social distancing is better than six feet down. That's my thing. Six feet down is permanent. Social distancing is temporary until we curb this horrendous virus that someday we'll know how it started. But bless your family, keep them safe. I know we miss our grandkids. I miss my grandkids terribly. I wanna just hug them and I know they wanna hug me. But you know what? I will someday. It may not be the time frame that I want, but I'll hug them someday. So listen, stay home, be safe. Find your inner juices and do something with yourself. Crochet, knit, I don't know. Find something to do. I'm certainly not bored. I mean, we've been home here since March, uh, like I say, about March 20th maybe was the last time we were out. And I just, I'm not bored. Well, I was too sick to be bored, but now I'm certainly not bored with my husband home. And I'm blessed. So thank you guys. Stay home, stay safe. Enjoy your quarantine. Love your family. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.